how can we respond to dog whistle politics, to these steps? So here, I think, let me turn it and open it up. How do we respond? And I think there's two main ways of responding that are on offer out there. There's a third, but hopefully no one's going to suggest it. I'll just say Bill Clinton. But how do you respond? How should progressives respond? All right, let me try it this way. How is the Democratic Party responding? It's unclear. No, no. They have a they have a quite defined response. Anybody remember? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, a better deal. Was it a better deal? What was the Papa John slogan? A better deal. So it also turned out to be the Democratic Party. It, it was a pretty memorable campaign. You guys don't remember this? Yeah, I think it lasted for four days, three days. <laughs> huge, huge rollout. Chuck Schumer wrote an op-ed. They, they had a big sort of press conference. It was going to be their considered response. Mid-summer 2017, they figured out how to respond. How did they try and respond? Appealing to white voters. How? Uh, policy is designed to appeal to the white working class. OK, so did the Democrats say, hey, we know how to win. Let's, let's go out and start talking about how important white voters are. Is that the language they were using? What, or what are they, how do they do it? Uh, they were talking about corporations and, and class a little bit. Uh, a little bit? A lot. <laughs> a lot. And what do they say about class? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Super memorable, though. <laughs> right? I mean, and, and, and I have to say, this is part of the problem. But, but we need to figure out their logic. Can I, I'm just going to say, you know, no suspense. This is a failed logic. But it's also what the Democrats have been doing since 1970, like literally in 1970. Democrats looked at Richard Nixon and they said, race is going to be used as a wedge issue to break the democratic coalition of African Americans, unionized white working class, and white liberals. Race is going to shatter our coalition. And then they said, here's what we should do. Talk about economics. Why? I mean, what's their thinking? I gotta start calling on people. This is this is this is like the law professor prerogative. <laughs> and and can I just say it gets ugly fast. <laughs> All of you thinking about going to law school. Some of you in law school thinking, I think I can withdraw. <laughs> um, is that um, a law student? <laughs> She's used to this. So what I'm guessing is that um, in the left we or they um, try to play cleaner, um, so we're vying for purity. So it's easier um, to say that you're politically correct if um, you're shifting the conversation onto class instead of tackling race directly. You use it as Interesting, class. interesting. So, so two things there. I, I really like saying it's cleaner to talk about economics, right? There's this kind of sense of it's cleaner to talk about economics. But then you got to say, OK, well, what are we not talking about? And what we're not talking about is race relations, right? And somehow it's race relations that make things dirty or confusing or difficult, right? And now there was this other word about politically correct. Politically correct <coughs> is probably one of the two biggest dog whistles of the 2016 campaign in this sense. It allowed people who wanted to say things like, we need to kick the Mexicans out, or Trump that bitch, right? The, the, the sexism of the Trump campaign, it allowed them to say, hey, you guys, you're just being politically correct. Don't tell me what to say. I'm actually saying these ugly things more out of a defense of my right to engage in free speech than it is because I believe them. Can't you take a joke? Don't be so politically correct. 
Right, so politically correct operates as a dog whistle in this sense. It allows people to express ugly, vicious views, but to tell others and maybe themselves really what they're doing is pushing against other people who are trying to control their thinking. Right? It provides a seemingly principled justification for the expression of ugly and regressive social views. And so I think on the left, we need to be very careful when we ourselves use a term like politically correct, because the valence is efforts to get people to take social hierarchy seriously or instead efforts to control people's thinking and should be repudiated, whatever you think of social hierarchy. Though, as it turns out, the people who are repudiating it actually favor social hierarchy. Right? So, okay, so, so I want to be careful with that language, but I do like this idea. We're going to talk about economics because there's something cleaner about it. Okay, more on this. What is this response to dog whistle politics? What does it say? It says, talk about economics, and now, Someone might turn around and say, well, talking about economics is really a way just to talk to white folks. And if you're one of these people saying, no, we really ought to talk about economics, how do you respond to that? Because it's not as if the Democrats weren't challenged. Right? People challenge the Democrats. And they, and, 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 and they say, why are you just talking about economics? Why aren't you responding to racism or sexism or xenophobia? What are the economics folks saying? And it's, I, I, I say the Dems, but, but this is Bernie Sanders. Right? Bernie Sanders is doing the same thing. I guess the tendency is to see class as the root cause of these issues rather than something that's symptomatic of something deeper. OK, so part of the analysis is class is the root cause. And so what does that imply about class? It implies that we'll ameliorate issues of racism and sexism and xenophobia if we can address economic issues and class issues. OK, so if I come back to you, and it, let, let, let's say you say, hey, we really need to focus on class. And I come back to you and I say, yeah, but well, what about people of color? Then what do you say back? People of color are also impacted by economic issues. And if we uplift them economically, then they will also come to the same stature of those who have typically been in power. Right on. And so talking about economics is actually Give me an eye. <laughs> it's, so you all have to say it, the boom didn't catch it. Inclusive. Inclusive, right? <laughs> so all the Democrats, you've got this very powerful move, and I'm gonna call this the class left. Okay, the class left, some of them are like Chuck Schumer centrists, some of them are Bernie Sanders radicals, but the class left is saying, we really need to talk about economics. And when we talk about economics, we're being inclusive. Because economics is the central issue. And everybody is going to be helped if we can just address economic inequality. Right? What's the other advantage? What's the big advantage of talking only about economics? I want us to be really explicit about this. It, it comes back up to this idea that it's, that it's somehow cleaner. What's the big advantage of economics only? There's a fear that focusing on quote unquote identity politics will alienate white working class voters in the Midwest. Uh, everywhere. But other than that, loved it. <laughs> right? I mean, so, so, so the economics only folks are saying something like this, not publicly, but privately. They're saying something like this They're using race to divide us, race is the weapon. But if we talk about race, we actually play, play right into their hands. If we say, hey, you're being racist, that turns around and antagonizes white voters even more. If we name the weapon being used against white voters, just the act of naming it makes that weapon more powerful. I saw this on Star Trek once. Yeah. Like you shoot the enemy with a torpedo, they get bigger. Right? This is the, right? This is, sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to. Do that more slowly, because I know not all of you watch Star Trek. Most of you, yes, and not all of you. You shoot the enemy with a torpedo, the power you're using against them actually increases their power. You say to the right, you're being racist. And they say, ha, they said we're being racist. 
And that furthers the sense of racial victimization on the part of their base. They love it. And it, it, right, did you see that Steve Bannon quote? Steve Bannon said, I want the Democrats to talk about racism all day long. If the Democrats talk racism, we got them. And so the Democrats have responded, and Bernie Sanders, the class left, has responded by saying, damn it. OK, they got us. We can't talk about racism. Let's hide that. Let's leave it in the shadows. We're going to talk about economics. And when we talk about economics, implicitly what we're doing is we're reaching for language that will connect with the white working class. 